Welcome to State of the State. I'm Darlene DeRezzo and I'm in conversation with Corporal Daniel O'Neill of the Rhode Island State Police. He's the canine coordinator and he brought along his partner, Coda. Welcome. Thank you for having me. Thank you for coming. Um, I was saddened to hear Ruby said in passing. Mm -hmm. I know it was unexpected and yes. I can imagine how devastating that is and a lot to bear. It was, uh, it was uh, you know, we spent 11 and a half years together side by side, 24 hours a day, you know. It's a different relationship when you have a police dog than a regular dog. You know, with a regular dog, you go to work, the dog stays home. Mm -hmm. With a police dog, you're with each other every day. So it was, uh, it's still, to this day, it's very hard to uh, even think about uh, her passing, but, I, but her memory gives, brings me the best smiles because mm -hmm. she was just such a great, great dog. Yeah, and her memory is going to live on in this movie, Rescued by Ruby. Yeah, forever. Forever. Yeah, I, yeah. So let's talk about you and the Rhode Island State Police first. What inspired you to go into law enforcement? So when I was a little kid, um, I wasn't the best at school. Um, always not really paying attention in school, but always had a big heart to help others. Um, so I always wanted to help my classmates do better um, and then I would kind of take the scraps. So I, my mom who was a nurse inspired me to do uh, you know public service so where she would help people that she didn't know you know she worked in the ER for 40 years and so the way I saw her change people's lives I said you know what I'd love to go into public service and mm -hmm. for some reason I you know I always leaned towards police and I always loved police officers always liked seeing police officers on the highways and um, and I just wanted to help people and you know anytime you go on to an interview to become a police officer you know you what the uh, board wants to hear is the first thing is you want to help people and that's you know that's what we signed up for and here I am you know 19 years later and I still live by that every day mm -hmm. you know? and I just I love the job and I love being able to be out there and making a difference in people's lives. And so you entered the academy in 2004? 2004. 2004 yeah. oh, my math is yeah, quick there. Good. Yeah. <laughs> and what then led you or attracted you to the canine unit? So I was lucky enough uh, to have Corporal Zarella at the time, uh, Corporal Matt Zarella at the time, come up to the academy to do a canine demonstration. So he came up with a few of his canines and uh, did a nice PowerPoint. And so for some reason, the way he had passion for what he was doing, um, at the time he had 15 years with the state police, and he was so happy to have uh, the ability to change people's lives in the, in the aspect of search and rescue and human remains detection through crime scene uh, detection. And I just looked at him and I just, he just had that energy that I just loved. And I said, you know what? I, I said, I want to be a trooper and I also would love to have a dog because mm -hmm. because I want to be that guy um, and and I just stuck to my my guns and I you know I was passed over a few times but I never gave up you know mm -hmm. I, I constantly just went before the board and said my spiel every time you know I just want to help people I want to do the right thing I want a dog as a just another tool to further my goals and um, and then in 2011 I was picked to go to then training. To go to training, yeah. So he, I was picked uh, to get a search and rescue dog. I didn't know what kind of dog I was going to get, mm -hmm. but they picked me to become a search and rescue handler. So I was going to go to a search and rescue school, which is about uh, 320 hours. Mm -hmm. And then I was going to go to a scent school, which is going to be human and remains detection, mm -hmm. which is about 240 hours. So I was all prepared, you know, to do the, the, the over 500 hours of schooling. Um, you know, but I just didn't know what kind of dog I was going to get. So I was a little nervous at the time. <laughs> and was Ruby your first dog? Ruby was my first. Yeah. Oh. First ever. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So I thought I was going to get, you know, a uh, high priced, you know, $8,000 fully trained uh, German Shepherd, you know, like kind of like the one you see on my patch. Mm -hmm. um, but I was given, well, now I look back and I was given a gift. Um, you know, I was, at the time I wasn't, too happy because uh, I saw this little, you know, eight month old uh, Australian Shepherd Border Collie mm -hmm. walk towards me with going all over the place, you know, biting the leash. And, and I said, Sergeant Zarella coming and handed it to me saying, hey, good luck. And mm -hmm. I was like, what, what is this thing that you're giving mm -hmm. to me? <laughs> yeah. And if our viewers want to look up Search Dog, 
you can actually see the moment that Ruby was adopted out. Right. Yep. That was at Rocky Hill. Um, I'm, I'm not Rocky Hill, um, Rocky Point, um, mm -hmm. when after they closed it, we used it as a training area. Mm -hmm. And uh, yeah, that was in August, August 3rd, 2011. I'll never forget it. And uh, he called me, he said, Dan, come down. I have your dog. And you can see it in the movie. And that documentary is, you know, by Mary J Jamie, um, uh, Healy Jamiel, uh, URI professor. And she followed us for six years um, and documented her whole you know, first five years of her career because mm -hmm. she started with Matt first and then mm -hmm. I came into the picture. Mm -hmm. So it was amazing to see how she grew from this rambunctious pound dog to a certified state police trooper. Yeah, she was yeah. aggressive. Oh, yeah. She was aggressive towards other dogs. Mm -hmm. um, she was aggressive. She was food aggressive because, mm -hmm. you know, her history was not great. You know, she had been returned five times um, because she didn't have the ability to show her true personality, you know, because mm -hmm. she was too high energy. You know, when she got to people's houses, she dug up their backyards and she was very guarded with her food because she didn't know if it was going to maybe be her last because mm -hmm. she was thrown around from, you know, house to house to pound to pound. And, you know, the SPCA tried their best, you mm -hmm. know, and and here we are. You know, yeah, it's crazy. So within <laughs> two hours of potentially mm -hmm. being euthanized, she was adopted out. Right. Yeah. And yep. that was nuts because Matt, Sergeant Zarell at the time, Matt called me and he said, you know, hey, I got to go get this dog. You know, I got to meet you tomorrow to get it, but we got to do it tonight. And I said, Sergeant, I'm in New Hampshire. <laughs> and he said, well, I only got a couple hours, so I'm going to go get her and then I'll meet you. Mm -hmm. And I was like, okay. So I was all excited. I, I had no idea. Mm -hmm. But um, yeah, he, he, he was, him and Joe was Zika and Pat him and, you know, they're a godsend. You mm -hmm. know, if they, they truly made her life, uh, you know, uh, she wasn't put down because of them. Mm -hmm. You know, they, they fought for her time and time again because they just didn't, they knew she had this ability that just needed to uh, be, be seen, mm -hmm. you know, and uh, really have her focus all that energy to a job. Mm -hmm. Now, do you consider yourself a trooper first or a dog handler first? <laughs> well, I consider myself as a husband and a father. Mm -hmm. um, and then, I don't know. I, I I'm kind of. I don't see myself as a dog handler. Uh, I've only I've been a dog handler for 11 years, but I've been with the state police since '04. So I would consider myself, I guess, a trooper first. But mm -hmm. however, this is my calling. Mm -hmm. You know, um, I haven't worn the regular uniform in 11 years, and I haven't. I don't see myself going back to it for a mm -hmm. long time. You mm -hmm. know, um, it, uh, having a, a dog with you 24/7 is just. It's priceless, mm -hmm. you know, and you got to think, you, you can always talk to a dog if you're having a bad day or a good day, and they'll always listen. Mm -hmm. So for having a stressful job like I do, it's nice to be able to rely on something that's always going to mm -hmm. be happy to see you. Mm -hmm. um, let's talk about the history of the canine unit. So there was a dog named Tony, canine Tony? Long time ago. Long time yeah. ago. Yeah. So. Tell us about Canine Tony or what you might know of Canine Tony and then sort of the history of the unit. So I don't know too much about Canine Tony, uh, but I know there was, there was, he was back, oh boy, way before my time. I think he yeah. passed, he passed in 1929 yeah. and he was a patrol mascot. Right, yes. Yeah, so, so what does that mean? So <laughs> he was just kind of there. Um, so that's when the, the unit started, basically. Uh, he was kind of like the, all right, let's try this dog and see if it works and let's see if we can scare people and you know if people run away we'll see if we can run after them because you gotta think dogs have the uh the instinct to go and herd and corral and if someone runs away from the pack they want to bring them back in because of the pack mentality mm -hmm. so tony came on as hey let's try this you know and you know it was there was no certifications there mm -hmm. was no training it was like hey let's just Let's go for it. Mm -hmm. However, uh, you know, it did start the ball rolling. It did take many years. Um, it wasn't until 1991 when we became a full-fledged uh, full-time unit. Mm -hmm. So that started with, uh, at the time, it was Corporal Zarella. Mm -hmm. uh, and um, at, the, at the time, too, it was uh, Corporal Roger Reardon. 
they Roger Reardon did the patrol side, meaning the uh, the apprehension, uh, the narcotics, the explosive side, mm -hmm. whereas uh, Sergeant Zarella or Corporal Zarella at the time did the search and rescue and human remains detection and all that side. So they worked together to form this wonderful unit. And, you know, he stuck with it for this whole career. You know, he started in 1990, started the Cannon Unit in 91, and then retired in 2015, and he, that's all he did mm -hmm. was build this unit. So he built the foundation. Uh, Sergeant Carlston took over, um, and Sergeant uh, Eric Jones took over. They kind of just did the same thing, the patrol side and the search and rescue side. And then I, so I came in, I was lucky enough to get corporal in 2020. And, and Congratulations. So, mm -hmm. Yeah, thank you. <laughs> mm -hmm. And I just basically started putting paint on the house. You know, they built the foundation, mm -hmm. they put the windows in, they put the roof on, and now I'm just making it look pretty. Mm -hmm. um, they did so much. They dedicated their whole career to this. So. Uh, I have plenty of years left, uh, you know, uh, I, I got on the, the state police very young, which I was very lucky to. Mm -hmm. I got on at 23 years old and I'm only 41 and I, uh, I probably have about 12, 13 years left. So mm -hmm. I'm going to make it the best I can and then pass it off to the next coordinator. Would you elaborate on the two classifications of the police canines? Sure. Yeah. So we have right now we have 14 police dogs on okay. the state police. Um, but not everyone does the same um, discipline, mm -hmm. called disciplines. So like I have Coda, who is a search and rescue and human remains detection dog. And then there's another dog named Maximus who does the same thing. So those are the only two dogs in the state that do those specific types of uh, disciplines. So we go out on everything, you know, so any type of missing person. So we're always on, I've been on call since 2011 because of that, you know, but, um, and then you have the other side of the, what we call the other side of the house is we have the patrol dogs. The patrol dogs are the ones that you see in the cruisers mm -hmm. where if a suspect runs from a car stop or if a, there's a B and E or something like that, they're the ones that are going to track in, you know, if the person does not give up willingly, they're the ones that are going to apprehend. Mm -hmm. And then they branch off to the different scent disciplines of, um, uh, you have bomb, which is explosives, and they do gun, uh, so they were able to find guns because of the smokeless powder, and then you have the narcotics side. So the narcotics side of the house does all the methamphetamines, the heroin, the cocaine. Mm -hmm. So there's all different, and we actually have two other dogs uh, that are up and coming right now. We have our first ever, ever uh, therapy dog. That's we, right. Tell yeah. us a little bit about that. Yeah. Actually, before you tell us about yeah. that, so yeah. um, are these single purpose dogs then? So every dog that we have on the road yep. that's um, in patrol is dual purpose. Dual purpose. Yeah. Okay. So dual purpose means scent and patrol. Okay. So if it's not a patrol dog, it'll be a tracking dog. So these, so Coda here and Maximus are tracking dogs. Mm -hmm. So, but they would never bite at the end because they're, they're meant to be let off leash mm -hmm. and go out and, sur and search a 40 acre area within two hours. Mm -hmm. So we can't do that with a patrol dog because a patrol dog is going to get out and they're very, um, let's say, full of energy. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and they want to go out and they want to find the person because they, they're, they're kind of uh, trained to apprehend because okay. they because they are the they're the aggressive dogs mm -hmm. where as our search and rescue dogs they want to be able to find kids and things like that so that if a kid you know a boy scout which we've found in the past where you know they go wandering off from a camp mm -hmm. they want to be able to just go right up to the boy scout and the mm -hmm. boy scout can pet them and they can you know so mm -hmm. feel safe mm -hmm. you know whereas a patrol dog you can't really do that mm -hmm. <laughs> okay so now you've yeah. added a fuzzy little puppy Yes. <laughs> to your oh my gosh. We, well, we, we we luckily we added two. Okay. Um, so our first ever therapy dog. Mm -hmm. This is a comfort therapy dog. Um, he's only five months old, so he's got a couple more months before he can get certified. But he is awesome. His name's Gus. Uh, he is an absolute sweetheart. Mm -hmm. um, he's just awesome. Um, he has already made a difference in the special victims unit alone. Uh, the detectives and the lieutenant and sergeant stuff. Everyone there is calmer with the dog being there because they're able to just kind of let out the stress. Like I was saying before, how you mm -hmm. can always talk to a dog, always pet a dog and take a moment and, you know, just kind of calm down because mm -hmm. you know? they deal with a, lo a lot of, you know, heinous crimes. So, mm -hmm. they, you know, it's good to have a dog in there. So, mm -hmm. and then we have another dog, uh, his name's Birdie. Uh, her name's Birdie. Uh, she's going to be the replacement for our electronic device detection dog. So they work with our Internet Crimes Against Children's Coalition, mm -hmm. uh, the detective division, where they have all detectives throughout the state that work with us. And then, so that dog will go out and uh, find, you know, flash drives, cell phones, anything that will have any type of criminal activity stored mm -hmm. on it. So it's pretty neat. 
And how does the training differ? So every every yeah everything's a little bit different. Yeah, especially yeah. with a comfort dog. Right. Yeah. I, I have a therapy dog yeah. in my office mm -hmm. um, to soothe clients. Yeah. I was curious about. Yeah. So the there's a 15. So if you look up uh, American Kennel Club, mm -hmm. um, there's a 15, uh, actually a 10 to 15 t um, point test that they have to go through. Um, it, it basically just makes sure the dog's social. Uh, the dog can be left without the handler for an extended period of time. Mm -hmm. um, the dog's not food aggressive. The dog's not dog aggressive, you know, if there's a dog that happens to walk by. Mm -hmm. Like one of the tests, they have the dog left in the middle of 10 people, and then they, the handler walks away. And then someone from that group has to pick the dog up by its leash and take him to an opposite side. Mm -hmm. So they just want to make sure that the dog is not jumping, mm -hmm. you know. So it's a lot of oh, just basically obedience. Mm -hmm. um, so our our vendor who's Red Allen Canine Academy, he's he's great. He's uh, he's a retired sergeant and he knows his stuff. So he picked out this dog specifically for the, the therapy comfort dog because he knew just the temperament and everything with Gus. He's just a he's just a, a, a fluffy little little wonderful dog mm -hmm. you know so they and then with us you know with all the patrol side and everything like that you have total different um schools you know with the patrol side of schools the tracking school we do an article school so we teach the dogs how to t uh, sniff out anything that has human touch so anytime you touch anything like if i was able to take this coffee mug and go throw it out into the woods mm -hmm. Coda would be able to find it just because mm -hmm. it has my human scent on it um and that could be up to certain days. So it's all different types of schooling. So we we have a set of standards that every state police agency in New England has to abide mm -hmm. by. So I can go to any state police agency, say Massachusetts, Connecticut, and I'll be able to train or certify one of the dogs because that's exactly how I do it. Mm -hmm. So we call it the NESPAC, which is New England State Police, um, New England State Police uh, Administrative Conference Pact, where. Um, like I just uh, had one of my troopers go into Massachusetts to certify some cadaver dogs um, because we it's like having our own dogs you mm -hmm. know because it's all the same standards so mm -hmm. it's uh, we're the keeper of records in Rhode Island which is great because I'm the I'm, so I able to do all the policy for that so I can kind of see what's the trend is mm -hmm. uh, throughout you know the country and the trend right now obviously is more towards um, patrol dogs kind of taking a step back is it? How yeah. come? Uh, Why just is that? Uh, I, I think it's because of the aggressiveness of the dogs. Mm -hmm. um, I find that a lot of uh, police agencies, you know, you got to think in, when I started uh, back in 04, I, they never would have thought of a comfort dog. You know, and then you had Callie in um, Pawtucket, who was the first ever comfort dog in Rhode Island. And that dog, you know, came superstar because mm -hmm. they realized how beneficial it was for uh, victims and now so that's this and then bristol has a comfort dog you know and, and and smithfield has a comfort dog so they seem like the the dogs are being more used to victim assistance rather mm -hmm. than saying going after a bad guy um or girl um so i just feel I, i'm the trend throughout the country is more towards kind of softening up a little bit you know mm -hmm. um you know, just to make police more approachable, mm -hmm. you know, which I'm, which I'm okay with. Mm -hmm. You know, I, we're, we're part of the community, and I, I want to be able to, if we have any walls up that we have to take down for us to become closer, then, you know what, we have to, we have to keep moving. Mm -hmm. We can't, we have to be progressive, yeah. rather than saying, oh, we just, we can't change. Mm -hmm. It's like no, you, you have to keep moving forward to make a difference. Mm -hmm. The comfort dogs are developing or helping develop trust and connection. What about? The trust and connection that you develop with your partner how is that it's, ha how does that happen yeah so um I, it's funny because uh, i just picked three new handlers for the state police because okay. um, we had some retirements uh, and these gentlemen that are getting the dogs are going to be paired up with the dogs about a month before we even start school mm -hmm. so they're due the dogs are supposed to come in in october and i'll give them to them uh, I'm, I'm sorry they're Training will start in October, but I'll give it to them on, in September. Mm -hmm. So all they do is basically spend 24 hours a day with them. Um, feed them, you know, bathe them, uh, keep them in the cruiser, uh, take them for walks. They gotta take at least two or three walks a day, long walks, they gotta do everything. When they go into the barracks, they gotta bring them in on leash, put, sit them down mm -hmm. while they type in their reports. Mm -hmm. um, because then the dog will bond because that's what dogs love to do. They love to bond who's ever the provider and whoever provides love. Mm -hmm. So that's what I want to, you know, so being a handler, you have to, you have to be very, um, 
I would say persistent and uh, I, I don't know how to say it, but like um, compassionate towards the dog, which mm -hmm. is not patient. Yeah, patient. That was the word I was looking for. Patient, because you know, being a police officer, you, you know, you, you it's either y yes or no. With a dog, it's eh, maybe. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you know, so you have to, you always have to be like, okay, all right, all right. You tell me what to do, and I'll do this, and you can do this, and we can we can hang out together. And mm -hmm. so for for a whole month, that's all they do. Mm -hmm. um, and I find that. You know, with that bond, when they come into school, the dog wants to learn. The dog probably wants to please their partner. Exactly. Yeah. They want to learn the traits that, you know, dad's already teaching me how to sit and stay. And mm -hmm. dad's, uh, you know, trying to teach me how to do this. Because we won't do any type of um, scent recognition or any type of patrol work that first month. All it is is bonding. Mm -hmm. So, um, and, it's, and it's a big change for the trooper, too. Um, because they went from, you know, putting their uniform on to you know, walking outside and getting in the cruiser and leaving the house. Now it's putting a uniform on, oh, I gotta feed the dog. Okay, now I gotta bring the dog outside and I gotta wait for it to do the business. And then I gotta take the dog inside and I gotta take the dog into the kennel and, you know, and, um, and they're not clean animals either, so. And they shed. <laughs> and they shed like and crazy. And they things. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> And I mean, you, you know, we take a lot of pride in our cars and our uniforms, and so it's very difficult. I mean, we were we were talking earlier at how I have a leaf blower from my cruiser to mm -hmm. blow all the hair out <laughs> just mm -hmm. to keep it clean. Um, so it, it's a big life changing event when they get a dog because mm -hmm. you become, you know, a trooper. You work a thirteen hour shift, and when you go home, you're done. No, but with not a dog, exactly. you're not done. Mm -mm. You know, you, you're. That's why we 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 are very stringent on. We're very particular about who we pick to become a, okay. a trooper. They yeah. have to have the personality of, it's not all about me anymore. Mm -hmm. You know, they have to put their ego aside and go, okay, it's about me and the dog. Mm -hmm. so. so, yeah, so you mentioned too about the stress, mm -hmm. right? So there's that component, right, yeah. to to becoming a, a dog handler, working with the canine unit. Yeah. And then families come to you with so much emotion. Yeah. How do you manage that, mm. and then how do you not let the dog pick up on that, or how do you sort of protect the dog from that? Because she mm. needs to do her job, mm -hmm. and she needs to have fun doing it, yeah. right? So you're holding all this emotion, I'm sure. Mm -hmm. it, it's difficult because, uh, unfortunately, with our search and rescue background, we only see people in the worst of times. You know, um, I've been on week searches where I've seen the family, they haven't slept, they haven't eaten, they haven't even left the, the area because they, they have the hope of, you know, the, the, the dogs are here, then we'll definitely find our, our uh, you know, lost loved one. And it's very difficult. Um, there's a lot of times where I'll, I'll have to talk to another handler before I even go and get my dog. Um, because this leash right here is our connection mm -hmm. and whatever I feel and anything they feel it come right down the leash and it goes right into them because you know I've been on searches where I you know sh you know Ruby has found people and I'm so as a as a human being you're upset you know you're like oh my god I hope this person is not deceased I hope this person isn't severely hurt I hope it you know but at the same time you have to be so happy that you know, that Ruby did her job or mm -hmm. Coda did her job because you've trained and trained and trained. I mean, Coda's been training for four years, you know, mm -hmm. and Ruby did every, every month we have to train 16 hours a month, mandatory. So it's all about training. And, and so when we finally accomplish our goal of mm -hmm. training, it's like, it's like winning the lottery. Mm -hmm. But at the same time, you're like, oh my God, this is, this is a loved one. I got to get back. You know, mm -hmm. so yeah, the stress, I mean, I, I teach uh, stress resilience, uh, resiliency and how to deal with stress. Well, to what a lot that, of what does that look like? Uh, so it's a lot of um, physical activity mm -hmm. after, after work, um, no self-medicating, meaning, you know, be careful with, you know, alcohol, mm -hmm. um, which is, you know, an issue with a lot of police officers, you know, mm -hmm. and, you know, and, you know, I think it, you know, with everything that comes with that. So it's it, a lot of the stress is just learning how to t uh, talk, mm -hmm. you know, to actually uh, confide in people. Mm -hmm. uh, my wife, Melissa, is a, a godsend. She's an angel because in the first few years that I was with the state police, we didn't have a peer support unit. Mm -hmm. And I used to come to home to her as a 23, 24-year-old kid and talk about how I saw, you know, stuff I shouldn't have seen. Mm -hmm. You know, an average police officer sees 150 tragedies a year. That's a lot of secondary trauma. Right. And an average person sees two to three in their lifetime. Yeah. 
you know so you think of all that stress that you, you, that's weighing on you every day and then when I have to go for a search you know in the middle of the night um, mm -hmm. you know she knows I get stressed however you, you just have to have the right outlets and I teach the the, the troopers and I teach all over the the state about uh, you know just how to be resilient mm -hmm. how to, you know don't let it uh, bog you down you know mm -hmm. I always teach I teach how I do it at work at my own house when I walk in I don't even say hi to my family I walk right to my basement I take all my stuff off and I come up in shorts and a t-shirt so that's how they see me you mm -hmm. know and it's like and then I'm like hey dad's home mm -hmm. and then it's you know dinner fun talk and mm -hmm. um, you know I try my best to just kind of leave work at work mm -hmm. um, it's been a lot it's been a struggle um, but you know and that's why I think the benefits of those comfort dogs and things like that definitely definitely helps out. Okay, so we have yeah. three minutes left. Let's talk oh, wow. about Rescued by Ruby. Yeah. Yep, yep. All right, so quickly, how did this movie come to be? Yeah. And I don't know if we want to give away the ending, but <laughs> that's probably <laughs> the best part. Yeah, and it's all true. And which it's is all, all true. Yeah. It's all true. It's all true. Um, so t uh, I'll just fast forward quick to 2017, I get a call from Gloucester Police Department, uh, missing person, um, you know, young boy missing for 36 hours. They had searched in the woods, they couldn't find anything. So they, so Lieutenant um, at the time, well, retired Lieutenant at the time, uh, uh, Joe Del Preet is the Gloucester chief. So he knew me personally, because I worked for him. And he said, hey, Danny, come up with the, the dogs. And I said, sure. I said, yeah, we'll be up, you know. And I had the t uh, Corporal Scott Carlson was the leader at the time. And so, uh, so Zeus and Ruby, uh, Zeus was uh, Charlie Bergeron's dog and Ruby was obviously my dog. We both went up there, searched for hours, you know, so hours and hours and hours. And as so we get back and we're really hot and everything. And so I looked at Scott Carlson and I said, hey, what, can we talk to the family? You know, like see if we can get some more information or maybe a possible location. So I go to the family and I start talking to her and I, and I, and I was listening. I wasn't really the forefront. And I, I see her, and I'm like, okay, all right. And she's like, yeah. She's like, I use, I hear, overhear her say, are you using dogs? And I said, and I was looking, I'm like, yeah, well, we've been out there for hours. You know, she goes, oh, I'm a volunteer at the state police, I mean, the um, SPCA, you know, of Venice Providence and, and all this. And, and I was like, well, that's weird. And she goes, yeah, are you, are you using this? There's a dog named um, Ruby that I, I helped get res rescued by the state police like years ago. And this was 2011. Now you're thinking this is 2017, so it's been six years. Mm -hmm. She hasn't, I've never seen her, never met her, nothing. Mm -hmm. And so Corporal Carlson looks at me and he goes, yeah, that, that's her handler right there. And I looked at her and she went, what? And I said, and I said, she goes, you have Ruby? I said, yeah. I said, you want to come? And she's like, yeah. So she came over to the door and as soon as I opened the door, Ruby came out and it was like they had never left each other's side. Ears down, there's only certain people that Ruby did, Ruby did this to, mm -hmm. but ears down went right into her, uh, into her, like her neck area and just coddled her. And was almost like, oh my God. So I, I looked at her, so we started talking quick and I said, well, and she goes, please find my son, please find my son, you know? And, and I was like, oh my gosh, the pressure's on, you know? Right. So here we are and I'm, I'm looking, I'm like, this has gotta be something. I'm like, this is, there's a connection. There's gotta be a reason why I'm here. So we go out, we search and search and search, and all of a sudden Ruby darts off into the woods and goes down this hill, comes around the corner. Now I look over and there's a pair of boots on the ground and there's Ruby and she's looking at me. And I was like, oh my God. So I run it down there and I, there he is laying face down. I thought, uh, I thought the worst, mm -hmm. you know, and we talked about that emotions and mm -hmm. I, I was starting to tear up because I was like, he was a young boy. And, and all of a sudden I, we turned him over and he started to moan. And I was like, oh my God. And so Ruby's licking his face, trying to open up his airways. Mm -hmm. And I'm calling out on the radio. And um, I, I marked my GPS and, and I started to call out, but they couldn't hear. Mm -hmm. So, um, but they could hear her barking when I was talking on the radio. So they said, keep her barking. Mm -hmm. So she barked for, it felt like forever, but it was only like three minutes. Mm -hmm. And here comes the rescue. They pulled her, pulled him out and pulled him off. So I got to go back to the house and I came running in with a big smile and Mrs. Zimmerman looked at me and she goes, no way. I said, Ruby did it. I was like, this is her way of saying thank you. Mm -hmm. And we cried and, and then fast forward to 2018, um, I was put up for the National Search and Rescue Dog of the Year and we went to Beverly Hills and got this huge award. And as I was coming off the stage at the gold, where the Golden Globes is filmed, this producer came to me and said, hey, I wanna make a movie. And I was like, oh my God, okay. Mm -hmm. And then I didn't hear anything. Mm -hmm. And then it wasn't until 2019 when Netflix picked it up. And so from 2019 to 2021, all we did was 
research from emails to phone calls to Zoom calls mm -hmm. to everything about the uniform, about the unit. And mm -hmm. um, yeah, so then, you know, and then the release and yeah. it was awesome. Like it, it's, a, it, and you know, and her memory will live on forever. I mean, my kids are going to be able to see, mm -hmm. I mean, my grandkids will be able to see the movie on Netflix mm -hmm. and um, her life will live on that, you know, just never give up and mm -hmm. the good things will come. Yeah. So yeah. she was a special dog and this is a very yeah. special unit. Thank you for yeah. being here. Okay. Thank, you. Thank you for watching State of the State.